come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. I don't know what episode this is, but it's pretty high up there in numbers. You can find all of our past episodes. 180s somewhere. Right? Yeah. Somewhere. You can probably check this out. Isn't that awesome? You can uh, on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and more everywhere that great podcasts are given away for free. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Guest Dave. Travis. And I'm Colin. And every week we watch a movie, then we sit around and talk about it. And tonight it was Travis's pick. And Travis, what did we watch tonight? We watched... Superman 3, the quest for a Superman sequel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, From boy. 1983, I want to say. And directed by... Richard Lester. Who also directed... Superman 2 and the Three Musketeers and the Fourth Musketeer. Yeah. You hear the <laughs> like, story about that one? That, that was the movie that, uh, because the Salkinds, the producers on these movies, they, like, they contract everybody to make a movie, the Three Musketeers, and then they cut it in two. And so they didn't pay them for two movies and they sued They like the actors sued. And then there was like a clause with the, uh, that was created called the Salkine clause with the screen actors guild. So you can't ever do that again. Motherfuckers. So there should have only been one bastards. and a half musketeers. Well, because su- well, <laughs> Superman, Superman one and two were filmed together. It was supposed to be one movie. Yeah. And so that's something just they something they do to kind of cheat them. Like try to film two movies in one and yeah. try to expand bastards. the story. Well, the Salkinds, uh, they were... Yeah, Alexander Ilya Salkind. There are, there are three generations of producers. Uh, I want to say Michael Salkind, uh, Ilya's grandfather. The claim to fame to the Salkind name, as far as I can tell, is that Michael Salkind... I think it's Michael, Jesus, Mikhail, I don't know. They're Russian. <laughs> I, right? Whatever. What Mikhail. Saying. I know, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, well, he produced the first Greta Garbo film. And he was famous for, like, producing a lot of silent films. But I imagine the Greta Garbo things, the big, like, you know, he yeah. found, you know, I don't know, found Greta Garbo, but, you know, produced. So he's movie producer elite. And then Alexan- then his son, Alexander Salkind, and then Ilya Salkind, uh, his son. Like, I looked at Alexander and Ilya, I think they just produced movies together. I can't, there's maybe one or two maybe that Alexander did apart from Ilya and maybe the same with Ilya, but it looks like all of them are father and son pictures. Well, what are they famous for? The Three and Four Musketeers, R- Superman, Superman's and R- Santa Claus the movie. Santa Claus the movie. And the, musca- like, the Musketeers, these are the British Musketeers, right? Like, this- well, I think they're, are they, f- are aren't they, they British? It was in the, I think it's like Michael York and Richard Chamberlain and right, Faye yeah. Dunaway, but right? not to be confused with the 90s Three Musketeers. Right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. For no, yeah. no, yeah, not yeah. at all. Are you yeah. starting a theme? Is this your first movie of those directors? No, or? we watch, we watch, well, okay. Because uh, I haven't listened for a couple of weeks, so I'm not sh- <laughs> up on the freak show, sorry. We've only done, uh, we've only done Man of Steel and now uh, Superman 3 when it comes to Superman movies. So we've never, because I mean, we're not going to watch any more Richard Lester, like, <laughs> like I mean, the, the anything, the Leslie and David Newman scripts and yeah. the... Because three they, and four are just like well, we did three. So well, like, Leslie Newman and David Newman, husband and wife, brother and sister. I think they're know. husband and wife, and I think they did. It, they might have also written one of those three Musketeer or four Musketeer movies. Oh yeah, I betcha, baby. Yeah, well, we they did a that. take on. I want to say they were like the Mario Puzo wrote. Superman 1 and 2, the main kind of He was Bible. the first guy that they went to? He was the very first guy, oh, okay. because that's how they got Marlon Brando, uh, yeah. you know. And, uh, and, uh... The Newmans came in and rewrote Puzo? They wrote rewrote Puzo, and then Tom... Uh, Makowitz. Makowitz, yeah. <laughs> Is rewrote that where the them. wackiness comes from? The wackiness comes from... Because, you know, the legend goes that the original Superman was supposed to be like a Batman 66, like... You know, hey, we're doing a cartoon, you know, or, you know, this is a comic mm-hmm. book, Woo-hoo, you know, yeah. punch, pow, whiz. And you can tell those jokes, but under Richard Donner's helm, those jokes fucking work in some weird way. They're like, really like, oh, that's kind of fun and classic, you know? Well, he mixes like there's a gravitas, right? 
to Superman in the first, at least the first movie. Verisimilitude, right? That's yeah, Richard the, Donner's right. yeah. verisimilitude. It means truth. That means the movie you're making, you got to believe in it. It's not fantasy. It's not, you know, the first line of Superman in the movie is, this is no mere fantasy. No, my, you know, he just tells you right from the get-go, it's not a fantasy, right? Yeah, but he treats Superman, I guess there's a respect, maybe, from the filmmakers. Part because he's American, right? That's what I hear. In the first movie. The The cell guy. (laughs) (laughs) Right, we're getting... Well, because the second movie, only only half of the second movie was directed by Richard Donner. And then Richard Lester filled in once, because, I mean, Superman, just learning how to fly... You know, the budget went over, yeah. the time went Wait, over. Wait, does everybody this know jazz. this story? Like, this is like one of the craziest fucking it's stories. One of the, I think it's Hollywood one of the best history. Hollywood stories. You know this about Superman? Uh, that it was which, filmed as uh, Superman 1 and 2? Two. Two no, were, that's the first I've ever heard of it. They were filmed as one movie by Richard Donner, right? And so the Superman 2 so was but not Zod, all of it. With Zod and all the Phantom Zone that was yeah, but, all filmed at the same time the yeah. first Superman was filmed. Yes. And but, Superman 2 was supposed to end with him turning back the clock. But they ran so over time and so over budget that Warner Brothers and the mm-hmm. Salkinds are like, you know what, hey, let's just release the first movie, yeah. take profits from that, and finish Superman 2. But then once Superman's a success, they're like, we can get rid of this Donner dude. Yeah, <laughs> that, so they that, that, fired like, Richard that was Donner. supposed to be a really epic movie. It yeah. should have yeah, been. Part if Richard one, Donner would have been, you yeah. know, Fuck, it would have been, been epic. Cool. Oh, yeah. it would have been great, dude. It would have been great. Yeah. Also, because the cast was kind of vocal about it. And a lot of people theorize that that's why Marco Kidder is not so much in this one, is because the cast was really like, dude, we, I mean, they loved Richard Donner. I mean, mm-hmm. the guy. I mean, fuck, look at Superman Well, yeah, movie. because that was the thing. Gene Hackman, I think, said basically he wasn't going to show up for work uh, for under Richard Lester, right? All so, the stuff with Gene Hackman was already shot yeah. with, with Donner. Because but, Gene Hackman and Marlon Brando both were only scheduled for like two weeks or some shit. So yeah. anything in Superman 2 with Gene Hackman is actually directed under Richard Donner, yeah. which some critics have been like, it, Richard Donner's, or, or Gene Hackman's better under the direction of Richard Lester. <laughs> but it was it was Richard Donner's scenes, you yeah. know? And Marlon Brando was supposed to be in Superman 2, still as Jor-El, but because he said, fuck you, I'm not coming back under this other guy, they got Superman's mom to fill in those scenes. So basically she gets to deliver wow. like what would have been Brando's part. In Superman 2. And then uh, Lester, so he finished the movie, but he also created... Because, like, Lester was, like, the Salkind's dude, yeah, right? Like he had and, done and, the, the Musketeers well, dude, movies. dude, during the shooting of Superman, they had Richard Lester come in. I mean, this is why the tension on, on set was really fucking tight, because they basically almost had, like, a... If, if, if Donner goes over whatever, over budget, over we got this assistant kind of guy looking over his shoulder, kind of ready to replace him. Yeah. yeah, dude, Donner, yeah, I love... Well, because Richard Donner at this point was only, like, the reason he got the job is because he directed The Omen in 76, right. and so his next move up was to do the Superman movie. So he really didn't have much of a career to stand on, mm-hmm. right, at that point. I mean, he was a TV setting director the before. bar for a Superman movie at that... All superhero movies. That time. Iron Man is... Superman the movie. I mean, that must have been, that would have at least gone, you know, two hours. Combining those two movies. I think it was oh, going to be it like been, it would have been, been like four hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they cut it, you know, the right way to where it would have been like a you know, Godfather type of you know, right, yeah. long movie. Not now where you can go to the theater and sit in there for four hours for a Civil War type of movie. I mean, right, the fact yeah. that you can see the Richard Donner cut, like as much as, Yeah, you know, it's been released now. The the Richard Donner Superman 2 has been reconstructed as best they can and released on video. They used to say, that was one of their uh, marketing ploys, was you will believe a man can fly. And man, when we were kids, I remember. you really thought he was you know, flying up. It was really I remember cool. that thing being huge. I mean, like, I remember going to, there was a store called Goldblatt's, which I don't think is around yeah. anymore. And Superman was there, and you got to go meet him. I remember him being at the record store. They they had it was like, like these... some janitor from the wreck. Yeah, I don't, know. Like... I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but it was a dude in a costume. I have a picture of me with him at some. You I know... met Michelangelo when the first turtles came. Out. <laughs> but to a kid, I mean, that was oh, a huge. Yeah, you oh, surprise yeah. surprised at what set you off. I mean, <laughs> well, that's yeah. Electric Company, Spider Man, or Superman showing up at the mall, or yeah. you know something really cool like that. I was like, holy shit! You know, there was a, there was there was a 
the role play kind of Comic Con, you know, outfits that are so extreme right. anymore. Oh, yeah. Where you see, you can see it every day. Yeah, it was for like, sure. it's holy like, it's like going shit, to the, that guy's the got a amusement really parks cool... and meeting Mickey Mouse. It's yeah. the same oh, concept. Yeah. You know, your yeah. mom wasn't making any kind of super suit as cool as whatever that guy <laughs> yeah. was wearing. You know? I mean, the stitching kind of sucked, and you know, but it was at least it was there. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so when the Salkinds basically ran out of Mario Puzo genius, <laughs> or then, Tom Mankiewicz, God bless well, him, who but wrote it was, that fucking movie. But it's Those, still Mario Puzo still came up with the, the whole yeah the whole mm. idea of the, both the movies with the Phantom Zone dudes coming back. I mean, this is all Puzo, right? Mm-hmm. Puzo went to DC, like looked through their archives, pulled out Zod and. So then Ilya Salka, you know, they're just left, right? They don't know DC, really. They just mm-hmm. have this property. It's like, we got Superman. We got to make more movies. We got to make more stuff. We got to make Supergirl. Franchise. Franchise. Superboy. Yeah. Anything we can do, right? And um, so the the story goes that I think it was Pierre Spangler, who is the other French uh, producer that worked on Superman, the movie, Superman 2, and I'm sure with a bunch of other stuff that the Salkinds did. Well, he saw Richard Pryor on the Johnny Carson show just talking about how he would love to be in a Superman movie. And they're like, what? Wing. <laughs> because you have to remember. Genius. <laughs> you have to remember the only reason Superman the movie got made, before they even had a script, I think, they went right to, they got Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman. Mm. That's how they got investors. Hey, yeah. we're making Superman. We got we got Marlon Brando as Jarrell, and we got mm-hmm. Gene Hackman as Luther. Yeah. I That's remember, it. They like paid Brando like three million dollars or something for like for like five it? minutes. Like, it was, yeah, like, it was like it was three was, days or something. Yeah, like, or a day. Or something. Yeah, I think that's why he didn't come back for two. Not necessarily the Richard Donner thing. It was just like. Uh, well, you, his, you yeah, know, my price. Stuff was, his stuff was already shot because it's sh- in. It's in the. Uh, oh, that's the right. It was cut. already shot. Yeah. 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 Where? Yeah. Maybe it's because said fuck you. You can't use it. Is it because they ended because he's brand new? Yeah, 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 I think he was already nice. going crazy at the time. So <laughs> yeah, Didn't so really yeah, matter. so they're just like so yeah. These guys, the Salkinds, they make movies based off. Uh, well, I was gonna say who's, who's the star? Whose who's fucking the... crazy idea was it? Who said Richard Pryor? <laughs> you know what Superman needs? <laughs> Richard Pryor. He's a lot <laughs> of the time. We do see that in today's <laughs> movies, though. Like, LL Cool J. Oh, all rappers go to horror movies. Well, they did. Like, in that, what was that stretch? 2000, like, yeah. seven to, yeah. like, they were just like, is there a rapper in your horror movie? Yeah. <laughs> but mean, traditionally, the audience for horror movies is, like, an yeah. urban audience. Like, Superman? Like, Richard Pryor hey, done. no, 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 no. It's Let more me... like a Kevin Hart kind of thing. Because Kevin Hart's in a yeah. bunch of movies. He's a popular comedian. He cracks people up. It's that true. Richard Pryor was doing the same thing back then, you know. Ooh. That's why they were putting, you know, Robin Williams in all kinds of movies. A couple years later, up. would it have been Eddie Murphy? Can I tell you why? Yeah. I, I, Let me spill some was. Superman. Yeah. This is Barry Superman. No, but I mean, in this the is Superman, Superman history. This is Superman history. I'm going to tell everybody right now. The reason why, why Richard Pryor would want to be in a Superman movie so badly is the Superman. A uh, radio show actually has uh, ties to kind of getting rid of, not getting rid of, but making it harder for the KKK to assemble. It was really weird. Like Superman, the radio show had a, had a little hand in this with this these three episode arcs or whatever. And a lot of a lot of like KKK members have been cited as saying like, well, it's hard. To like go out and do this thing when your kid is pretending to be Superman and fighting against what you're going to go do, you know. So there's like this. There's seriously, a, yeah, dude. There's a history of Superman kind of helping undermine the KKK, you know. So Superman kind of kind of helped the black in the community radio, in the radio, in the radio shows. shows back in the 40s or 50s or whatever. The fuck, I think these episodes were more in the Superman <clears throat> was fighting the KKK. It was, you know, how, uh, you know, how radio shows go. They were yeah. called the Brotherhood of something. You know what I mean? But okay. it was about race. Okay. You know, yeah. it's one of those things. You know what they're talking about, okay. but they use like another. I, I can't remember you. what the name of those episodes are. But that is why I believe the the black community really has a connection to Superman, the character. Because I swear to God, like black, black people like Superman and Spider-Man more than anything. 
any other well, characters. Because as Richard far, Pryor as far was as in I Superman see. three. I mean, that's, that's not I, why. I okay, highly but, but, doubt any of that. That's why Richard. I think it's. I why, don't think. I think that's, that's all bullshit. That's, that's why Richard saying. Pryor. And there's no how? reason you should think the black people like Superman because Richard Pryor was in a Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, how is that connected? I spilled that knowledge. So really. You're pissing, you're pissing on my history lesson. Pissing in my life. Oh man. So that is really far out, Travis. I can't believe you're like, God. I, I, can't, I can't believe we've deviated from Superman 3, a wacky, stumble bum, keystone cop kind of beginning of a movie. <laughs> and you have it. Superman coming in, and then Richard Price sort of shows up later in a welfare line, and then finally gets a job by accidentally pushing two keys on a computer. So <laughs> he's instantly a genius. So the KKK, I don't think we're gonna ever make a well, if, appearance in this movie, and I don't think it. Well, no, of course any, not in this movie. Gentrification I'm just by saying, any means. I'm just saying why I think Richard Pryor would no, want to be. He was the Kevin Hart he, of the time for sure, but he made this. But he made this public yeah. statement on Johnny Carson and Pierre Spangler, the the producer, saw that Get he's that like, man. this guy wants to be he's in a Superman money. movie, and sure enough, well, what had yeah, Richard he did. Pryor done at that time? Well, this like, was right was, after he burned himself. This was right was after huge that huge stand-up comedies. Oh yeah, yeah. He was, I remember he that. Richard sold Pryor. out just like huge. Eddie Murphy. Just well, he had those movies too. Richard Pryor and the Sun 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 Crazy and the uh, Toy. Uh, yeah. So the Toy was before this. Oh, that yeah. is a joke. No, I'm personally, I've never really liked it. Um, Richard Pryor was huge back then. He was then. huge. Yeah. He was huge. Yeah. huge. He so was huge. So that is when, when Warner Brothers opens up their checkbook and says, "Hey, we want Richard Pryor in a Superman." Well, no, this movie. is still this He's is still say, the, hell yeah. This is still the sell kinds because they know, hey, we're gonna push it back on the effects and we're gonna fucking put <laughs> Richard Pryor in yeah. half of this movie. And this does almost it almost follows the first Superman where Superman has his own story. Richard Pryor has Richard Pryor's just this character you were talking about in the welfare line, August uh Gorman. August, Gus Gorman. Gus Gorman. Gus Gorman. That's a metropolis yeah. name. Yeah. You gotta have a But it turns out the that he, yeah. So he hasn't worked for thirty five weeks or something like that, and he gets a job at a computer place, and it turns out that the man's a savant for computers, apparently. Now we're also convinced that I mean this has gotta this be This is the beginning of computers. Right. So no one who wrote this script had ever used a computer before in their life. <laughs> they were just aware that there were these things and they were called computers. Well but yeah. old computers, didn't you Those just write command computers. didn't you just write commands and were you just like do go here, do this. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. He just wrote Run a report in. for whatever the fuck. So well, it's I mean, almost I like this. Was, he's uh, so what, basic or whatever. So but he's like it a wasn't downtrodden. As smart as but yeah. he's well because he's like a downtrodden black man that never had the opportunity. But then he learns to, and he's a he's a whiz yeah. at computer programming. Right in a time where computers are new to everybody. You know, I like the idea a, that he's able to figure out that all financial transactions have like they they have the they these round the guy at lunch and, and they round up yeah, yeah a half a cent so he basically and wait, a half a day didn't hackers use the same plot? office space office space office, office space. space and they but they said yeah. that from Superman three <laughs> they they, yeah. they claim yeah. that's why oh I love yeah. office space he too. routes all the extra change <laughs> to his account and becomes like uh, an eighty six thousand uh, year yeah. I was going to say millionaire, but we didn't quite no. quite make it there. Yeah, so, but he, uh, this attracts the attention uh, of Robert Vaughn, who plays, what's his he, fucking character's name? Webs, Webco? Webster? Web, <laughs> Webco yeah. The it? villain. <laughs> the snidely whiplash. Yeah. If he would have had a mustache, he would twirl it. But, bad guy. <laughs> but what is also, okay, like, I'm going to make this clear for the rest of this podcast. I'm not a Superman fan. What? I'm a Superman idolater. There so, you go. Okay, so every, right. So color everything that you're will, about to hear. But you're, but you're wearing a Batman t-shirt. Well, I just want to it's point wa- out. It's wash day. I explained this. Okay. I have Batman for wash day. All right. <laughs> and then I have Superman. Oh, shirt. So I'm going to explain the super positive, like, because, okay, there's images of me as, I don't even know how young, with Superman toys and whatever. So, like, in this movie has to do with that because before reading all these comics before i had superman one two three i actually saw four in theaters in 87 <laughs> so how let down were you oh no not when not then dude i was fucking five years old oh, right, i was right, five right. years old i was like superman's flying he's flying 
So, yeah, so these guys are going to tell you the movie that probably really exists, and I'm going to tell you, like, <laughs> what this did in, in, like, Superman lore, legend, and in my mind. Well, you know that, in as David mentioned earlier, this movie starts off with a slapsticky <sighs> oh scene. It is horrible. The opening credits, and it goes on and on. It is kind of like a Charlie Chaplin, Buster yeah, Keaton kind totally of. Yeah, it's totally slapstick. Silent it's slapstick very, through the streets of Metropolis. European guys like That's like the comedy. Monty Python beginning of a Superman. <laughs> if, that was thought, the, <laughs> if that was the I'm goings of Metropolis every 15 minutes, I can see <laughs> why he why left the planet. I oh. see this slapstick. I'm walking through an open manhole. I well, just grabbed the paint roller and, and the blind, piano's blind guy, a bunch fall of on my head at any minute. Yeah. yeah, was there like Superman two? Correct me if I'm wrong. Starts off directly with the uh, Eiffel Tower. Or is there a slapsticky shit at the beginning of that one, too? No, it starts with, a, like, Clark Kent comes in, and he's like, what's going okay. on? There's okay. terrorists at the Eiffel Tower, okay. Kent. Gotcha. All right. So right this in. is the yeah. one yeah. I remember. This that. is, like, yeah, yeah, because they're like, well, we want a different, you know... I mean, because their idea, the producer's idea of this movie is like, well, we've had these, like, the per- first two movies are these legendary builds up the mythology of the character... This is an episode of Superman, is what yeah. this movie is. Yeah, it, it feels like it's from the 50s or in its mentality. Yeah. It does, it's yeah. It's just got updated it's like, stuff and it's computers. Almost like it's TV writing. Yeah. yeah. But I like all the computer shit, because I do think... What other movies from like eighty three? I mean, because eighty four is the big Terminator war Skynet. Games. I know. I was like, war what games? Was, <laughs> eighty three. Your war games was eighty three. Uh, yeah. So yeah, computers was on the bug. I'd like to play thermal nuclear warfare. And the problem with the uh, <laughs> sure yes yes the, the, the problem with getting rid of Richard Donner is that the Salkinds on their own they think good filmmaking, especially for children, you know, is like. Well, they got to see the person push the button and then see what it does. You know, that's good filmmaking to them because you see someone do something. It has a reaction that way. If they fucking barely understand English, Uh this is international filmmakers we're talking about. Right. If you don't understand the language, you'll like, oh, okay, bad computer, (laughs) you know, or whatever. (laughs) He's good at computers. (laughs) Superman flies. Uh, but I do have to say this movie has some of the coolest Superman flights. What? Like when it comes to just down on the street helicopter uh, wire shit, uh, he does cuz if you watch the other the first two, there's a lot of like you see it for 3 4 seconds. Cut 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 where this they could just have a steady cam and have Superman kind of uh, take off fly across the road and up a little uh, bit and you just get a little saying, bit yeah. more this is the positivity I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, he flew. There's I actually kind of like really good flight scenes, but number one and number two, I mean, it was like those are bar none. I mean, you really thought a guy could fly. Yeah. Oh yeah, this well, one are... there was a lot of. Uh, I felt a lot of uh, you know you could see the wire kind of thing, not necessarily see the wire, but the. You know, the landings and stuff like that. It's like that. the pitch control or something. It's still wild, right? I got it. On... I knew what they were doing because I saw yeah. the first two. I thought it was so stable like... because I think in the first two, you see a lot more special effects. and this, you see a lot more of uh, professional wire work. Mm. And I think that's why this one kind of impresses me because I like wire work without all the quick cuts. I like to look at something like he's taking off. Zoom. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. not quick before cut, you cut, cut to the blue screen shot. Because when you have quick cuts, that was, that's when you know you're into heavy video then. editing, right? With all quick cuts, you're like, well, shit, this is chopped up into this yeah. is like, this is 45 different like versions of him turning, yeah. and they have to put it together to make it look like something where if you could just have a stable camera and <laughs> zoom. But no, the opening is fucking ridiculous. It is. What Except is I do like the photo thing where suit, Clark Kent goes into like a, a car crashes uh, yeah. from oh, yeah, a bank yeah. robbery and then Superman goes into a photo booth and a kid puts in money. Well, I guess what? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. He, he, Superman just comes out and then, of course, like takes the photos, looks at him changing, rips off the Superman photo, gives it to the kid. Rubs him on the head. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. The rub on the head. It's- Christopher Reeve is absolutely by far the greatest Clark Kent. The I mean, greatest he's super- stumbly, you know, silly, you know, kind of too big for his britches. You know, you, you always see like the sport coat about to rip off. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just like you got you don't quite 
buy your clothes right, Clark. You're pretty geeky, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he really plays it off. What good. was that? Uh, it was, Tarantino did a thing in Kill Bill. You remember that? Where yeah. He finally, where she... she finally gets to Bill, and he's explaining Superman. And, and it's like, it's great. He's like, Clark Kent is his disguise. Like, Superman's the real guy. Clark Kent's the disguise. And that's yeah. the way that he sees us. He sees us as... You know, these yeah. stupid, yeah, um, exactly. you know, weak <laughs> people or beings on this planet. I'm like, hmm, because this super, or well, I, I guess. I take it from, okay, in the Superman the movie, they say, well, like, when he left Kansas, he went to the Fortress of Solitude for like 13 years. So that's where I feel that's the actual Clark Kent. Like, that's actual his weird awkwardness. It comes from there. It comes from him being in the Fortress of Solitude, mm. just talking to Jarrell for like 13 years. And that's why when he gets to Metropolis, and Lo- he's like, well, that's swell. And yeah. Lois is yeah, like... It's, a, it's an act, so you will never think that he's super. He's Superman. Because yeah. the Clark Kent on, on the farm in Superman 1 is the real... But I still God, think he's a Clark hokey Kent dude, right? Because he's, a he's still a, he's still yeah. a, a small <laughs> town kid, no matter what, right? He's the I guy. Think no matter what, Clark, you know, Christopher Reeve plays it great as being a dope. But as far as being, um, what you would have to go through as a Clark Kent was uh, completely portrayed portrayed great in you know the last you know Superman, you know that. Superman Batman movies. Oh, oh the new Henry. Uh, because it's like, Henry okay, Cattle, you already yeah. know you're strong. You already know you're going to kick the shit out of the fucking bully. You know what I mean? And you, you got to hide it. And you fucking this was- crash your bus. You pick the bus up with all the kids. You're all good. But you have, you're never not going to be strong. You're never not going to be a real badass. So you have to hide it. And you can't necessarily be a Clark Dopey Kent. And not be Superman. You have to be that in between guy that works on the oil rig or does this kind of well, shit. See, you can't always be a dope, you know. What but I, mean? I think the power, uh, a scene in this movie, I think is so fucking important, and it's something that I've really kept to this day when it comes to what Superman is in my mind. When when Superman or uh, when when Clark Kent arrives to the Daily Planet and they explain how well Lois is going to go to Bermuda, Clark is like, "Well, I want to go to my my family reunion." This is another way the South kinds are like, "Let's go to the high school, school reunion. reunion." High school reunion. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to go back to Smallville. I think it'll be a really nice kind of character piece or whatever. And you know, they send. When we oh, like okay, Lois leaves and blah blah. Everybody's like bye. You are know, like that joke where uh, where uh, Perry White's like oh, I'm losing my oh, it report. sucks to lose my best reporter. <laughs> and Clark Kent's like, well, gee, Mister White's like, yeah, Lois is like, oh shit, that's so funny. But then when he's like, all right, well, uh, I'm gonna go. Him and that lady that are drawing the numbers for the uh, like win a vacation, dude. They're just whatever. They don't. Fuck, like, this is what I love about Clark Kent. No one gives a fuck about Clark Kent. That's why he can look exactly like Superman with glasses. No one knows, because no one fucking pays attention to him. They they look at the floor. They don't like, I don't want to talk to that fucking dude. He's like a guy in the office named Owen. Or, or like... <laughs> <laughs> He's the hayseed in the big city. It's just, so, yeah, you just don't fucking pay He's attention to him. He's a magician. It's smoke and mirrors, Yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, you could be a you I think know so he's it's true. he's not <laughs> he's not the dope. I mean, you. I, I think, think a little bit is a... up. Superman is no dope. Bruce Wayne is no dope. But they will play your whatever you want them to think you are. But don't ever put try to put something past any one of those guys. I mean, they will really. I agree. So okay, so the idea here, so we have like there's at least. Two plot lines going on. One follows Clark Kent going back to Smallville, where we finally introduce, well, I guess we did in the first movie, but they bring in Lana, Lana. Lang, who's a big character in the comics, right? Yeah, from the his other love. story. Well, she loves Superman or Clark Kent. That's what's right. important the difference, mm-hmm. right? Lois, Lois loves, Lane, Superman. loves Superman. Lana loves Clark. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why I like Lana. And like so Lana. we get some, like, uh, which like, Lana is played by. She's kind of dumb, uh, but I like uh, Annette. Yeah, Annette. Uh, not Annette Benning, o- Perkins. No, Annette, Annette O'Toole. Oh, O'Toole. Thank Annette you. O'Toole. From yeah. who, played, who played Martha Kent in Smallville? Yeah, on the CW. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. cute. I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. 
Yeah. For years. Yeah. I sure. never yeah. watched I can't play Martha. <laughs> I don't watch Superman. They brought everybody. Everybody came back to that show at some point. They've always thought that was Superman, did, right? Kennedy yeah. did. Like uh, Dean Kane is in the new Supergirl show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've always done a lot of like, if you were in a Superman movie or show before. You're in the family. You'll be back. You're in the family. Yeah. yeah. And the plot there is basically like uh, that Lana wants to get out of uh, Smallville. And go mm-hmm. to Metropolis. Yeah, right? she's got like an autistic kid named Richie that no one likes. <laughs> he's not, he's autistic. not autistic. He is autistic. Shitty. Everybody hates him. A- every he, they go not to the, everybody. Dude, they're at the bowling him. alley, and everybody's like, "I don't want Fucking Rick." He, it, it's almost like those aren't. That's not him hanging out with his friends. That's Lana taking him just to be like. Go, go, <laughs> talk to them. Those are your precious. I have to find You know a what? Man. Those are your precious <laughs> directors directing that kid. Yeah. By the way, so don't call him some autistic kid. I'm just yeah. saying, everybody That's hates him. He's by not good at geniuses anything. that have thrown all together these Superman movies. He has to be autistic. I'm sorry, he's, he's not, not. He's the only he's a dumb character that doesn't make him autistic. <laughs> he wanders off into a field and hits his head. Right. He has the Fucking Lassie with the... I don't think that scene actually ever happened, though, but is Timmy down a well? He goes and falls in a in front of a combine, right? Yes. Yeah. And Superman has the to save The one rock him. in the field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he hits There's the one rock in the field. miles out. There's a boulder in the middle of a wheat field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was chasing Buster. And that's the, Buster, only, that's the only thing going on in Yo, the world. Clark and Superman Lana. has to go rescue yeah, him. Well, Clark and Lana are having a picnic, okay? And, <laughs> you know... They're getting to know each other because I mean Clark can't get with Lois for some reason. Well, because they, they had their thing. Too. Yeah, yeah, they had like, their God thing in one and two. They can't be together. But he Lana, maybe Lana, because Lana likes the geeky, the geeky Clark. She doesn't need Superman. She she just needs a man to help her take care of this fucking kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's got to chase him down everywhere. Yeah, well, Superman's got like a very kind of like. He's on his way to Smallville, and there's a chemical fire that's happening at a chemical plant right, yeah. where the acid, right? You know, they got yeah. this the room of acid. acid. If you it gets hot, it's gonna it's gonna turn it into it turns from a green to red of, when it gets really hot. And it it's yeah. super acid. I want to say that's it's gonna another, turn into a cloud of acid that'll eat through concrete eat through and eat everything. everything. That's yeah. another great joke in this movie when he lands and like he's like, "How can I help?" And it's like, "Someone get this man a helmet." Oh, it's you. Never, never mind the helmet. <laughs> but he's very like you know, he's on the bus with Jimmy Olsen. That's where Jimmy Olsen leaves the movie after this. Yeah, he no, he last. got hurt in the in the when the plant went down. Yeah, yeah he was up he on the fire. He's, he's, he's up on the fire ladder the yeah. or the, but he doesn't the hook come and back. ladder truck trying to take pictures. Yeah. But there, I guess maybe here's the th- my point. It seemed like there was a lot of uh, moments where Clark Kent wandering around the streets of Metropolis or wandering by a chemical plant or something could have done something uh, a little less conspicuous than changing into the Superman outfit by, you know, going running oh, behind a, a fence or jumping through a cop car and coming out the other side. Superman. Yeah. Then you get the guy that goes, nah. Yeah. I, <laughs> but I think, I think you nailed it right there. Cause that's my other observation about this movie. It's like the first two are adventure movies yeah. with a comedic slant to a, this is a comedy because you like straight up yeah. like a hundred percent comedy because it has Richard Pryor in it yeah, as Pryor the star. It. So the same Superman characters. that could have blown out a candle five hundred miles away didn't choose to blow out this fire. You know, right? Five yeah. minutes had to turn into well, Superman. Five hundred. Well, you had to away. like lift up the big turbine. I think that's a cool scene to me. It, dude, to me, Superman doing anything where it looks like he's like affecting the environment, like whether it's picking up a, a car or it's a, the nineteen fifties. Let's all slide down the side of the building to escape the fire. Yeah, to get off I that mean, building. Come on, Superman just showed up. It's like, give me a break. What, are they all going to climb on his back? Blow it out. <laughs> I like the way nobody really, it's like Superman's existed for so long at this point in the world that nobody is really excited to see him. When he shows up, it's like, like Travis said, oh, it's you. Or he goes into the room with the scientist. Or the scientist. The guy who's How controlling the, oh, We got to get out here. Yeah. The guy doesn't care. That I can't Superman. leave. It's like, I can't leave. For I some reason, we have 50 vats of acid that if they get above a certain <laughs> uh, temperature, they'll turn into a chemical gas cloud that will take it half of the Easter seaboard. Yeah. And it's like, what is this here? Anyway, it's adventurous. All right. So the, the second storyline, <laughs> or is it the first storyline? It is the first storyline. Played by Richard Pryor who's been recruited by his evil boss 
His evil boss has a ditzy girlfriend who talks with an annoying baby. Because the first baby, one did. Uh, well, not right. the baby voice. The baby voice. Right, because this is basically the stand-in for Lex Luthor. They've split Lex Luthor, the character, into two parts. Let me blow your mind. These are Bond villains. Well, because I thought Guy Hamilton too. was supposed yeah. to direct yeah. Superman the movie before they got Richard Donner. Yeah. And that's why they even use vehicles like them floating down on the balloon thing. It was, yeah. It's all James Bond, yeah. dude. These that, are the well, Salkinds. I, I can see that. Because yeah. they've got Salkinds like... Salkinds trying to make James Bond Superman movies. They've got these gigantic sets. Like the set for Robert Vaughn's character is like... It's like a Bond that's villain That's a Bond set. villain layer. It's a yeah. Bond villain with it things it that is. turn. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the map yeah. that comes out of the... But, swip, switches out of the floor. Yeah. And I do stuff. like this villain because this is when we get into the whole 80s, you know evil capitalist or evil you know like he's gonna affect the world's economy by destroying but he, that's what he Luther owns, did in the first movie no with the- no 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 <coughs> yeah the guy owns all these different companies right and he's mm-hmm. like well if i can affect the weather of this vulcan satellite to burn up the uh the uh the be- the the coffee beans in colombia well then my coffee beans that i own well, we're going to be the main... How's that different from if I destroy half of the California coast, the what real mean, estate is that mine? Di- it's, I mean, yeah, it's still corporate. <laughs> it's still kind of a... Uh, it's no, a but but it, I'm going to destroy it's not like this taking and make over- this other thing very valuable. If I destroy this that is there right now, I'll make this other thing I, very valuable. Like, I guess since it's still like a money-making thing, I guess it's still the yeah. same, but it's still a different plot. Like, if you're a criminal, just because you, like, point a gun and rob somebody, just because, it, yeah, I guess it's the same act, but you're doing it in different ways. He's the doing... super genius. I guess that's the thing. If you're He's gonna not go a up super against... genius, though. He's just this guy that's like, well, I own all this shit. If you make it, if I can... If I can uh, suppress these other businesses or these other whatever, well, then my stock and my it's shit. Still clever. It's cle- I think it's clever. But he needs he needs Gus Gorman, the computer genius, to actually make this stuff happen. Yes. And that was played by Kevin Hart, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Remake. Yeah, one day. Yeah. So, but the, the problem with this whole thing Hilarious. is, is that su- the, or the, with their plot. And I was going to say he has a ditzy assistant who talks like with a baby voice, and he also yeah. has this uh, very butch sister. A very yeah, yeah like they, they keep making everybody calls him a man, calls her a man. And yeah, that yeah. was kind of funny. Very funny. She's like a younger Hilarious. version of yes. the old hag from the Goonies. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is. their plot is thwarted by Superman. Goonies? Right, no. he goes and he fixes everything, so the the well, price of the awesome. beans never deteriorates. So oh, yeah. <laughs> they figured the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to have to kill Superman. How do you do this? Super kryptonite. bullets. Super bullets. Well, yeah, that, that idea doesn't homemade go very far. Homemade kryptonite. But they're going to come up. They're Super gonna, they poison. Gus with coming up with homemade kryptonite, and this I think comes up. This leads us to what I think is the most inspired sequence set of sequences in this movie. Right, where you get drunk Superman. Yes. Right? Well, because yeah. if somebody can basically turn the world backwards, I mean, they have unlimited power, right? So the best thing you could do is, like, weaken the character's moral, morale, right? Yeah. That's how you know. I mean, this is why there's that whole superdickery.com, right? To sell comic books for Jerk generations. Superman on Twitter, yeah. You have to, like, be like, what? Superman's not good anymore? You know, you have to... That's the only real way to shake things up unless you just have him fight another super guy, which they just had him fight three supervillains and two. Right. So the but only this way- is, like, a new idea to this movie, which I guess yeah, is where it kind of, like... but not to the comics, for sure. Right, yeah. Not for the character. The idea of making Superman bad is just a, you know... In the happens comics, every once in a while. And also kind of using a red kryptonite, red kind, kryptonite. Of a, right. kind of a story where you take another kryptonite that affects him in a weird way, and he just has to, like, work through it. There's, like, really nothing he can do. He has to wait it out. It's like right? a cold. You just gotta it let is it a, It's a cold. It's like a radiation <laughs> sickness. Yeah. You know, I wish there was a scientist character to be like, explain that. But it is just it's like, like he radiation. touches the thing for a brief period of time and then yeah. just becomes a super dick, right? Yeah, yeah. After a while, which I do like, I like how Christopher Reeve can show that in his eyes. You know, you could see where he gets like rapey on Lana, right? No, like it's in his that, eyes. That was seriously like the best acting I've seen Christopher Reeve do is become like asshole. Superman. Maybe because I'm psychologically like implanted with this Superman that when I see him be bad, I'm like, oh fuck, that guy's evil. Like, not him. Yeah. 
But he gets a he gets laid. Superman gets laid, which by is the, horrible. On the Statue of Liberty. Yep, by the uh, baby. And he gets talking. good and drunk. Oh, I forgot to mention he turns into Henry Cavill. <laughs> His costume. If you look at the Man of Steel costume <laughs> and look at this. That's the color. Uh, yeah. So he, what was bad like he has Superman a, yeah, in he has washed. is now what they consider to be, I guess, good Superman. Yeah. All the colors are very muted and dark in the costume. <laughs> you think he gets Superman. super drunk? When this he does. <laughs> well, he gets drunk. Does he get super drunk? Or is Obviously. it just kind of like... I, anything I, Superman well, does becomes super I'm going to go with he gets super drunk because he splits into two people afterwards. I mean, that doesn't happen to me when I get That doesn't happen to me. The Clark Kent... <laughs> And the Superman, and they get to, or sorry, and the evil Superman, and they get to duke it out in a junkyard. Oh, that was so good. Which is, no, it's very metaphysical. I like that. Was it actually happening, or was it only in his head? It's all in his head. <clears throat> all right, so the this fails. I mean, eventually Superman, you know, does find himself again and becomes the hero who can uh, right all the wrongs and correct the, the pitch on the Leaning Tower of Pisa after he fucks it up. So the bad guys uh, well, come up with a new idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, because if you're going to fight a Superman, it only goes it supposed to, to be Brainiac. that you have a super <laughs> computer. Before Obviously. they did the account books, they're like, Brainiac, because, yeah! And then they're like, eh, super computer. Because, new, because when Richard Pryor found his newfound talent of computers, all of a sudden he also knows how to build them. No, I he like just the had the idea. He almost, designs almost, it on a napkin by, like, a drawing. He's like, look, this is my, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is my like blueprint of, for the I believe, paper, I believe yeah. Jeff Goblin did that in The Fly. He he just tells. <laughs> but that's Jeff Goldblum. Well, but, come on, <laughs> God damn it! Gus just found his calling. It was computer. <laughs> he just didn't know it before because he was, you know, brought yeah. down by the man in Metropolis. Obviously. <laughs> so yeah, the computer that uh, housed somewhere in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Well, it has a, a an array of like anti Superman devices, right? So powered by Pac Man. They're waiting for it. Was well, powered by Atari. It was, yeah. It was the video, by, the video that always looked like the coolest video game you wanted to play when you were five. I think you could <laughs> buy that game on uh, Atari and play it. There's I an think arcade game that looks kind of like that. I remember but not the, fucking Atari. The side scrolling. System. Yeah, there was something for Atari at the time this came out. Like I don't know if it was Superman or Superman. Oh, it didn't I look bet as there good was. This. And I but it was like a blue block. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm talking. <laughs> there is an arcade game from like the early '90s that. Kind Kind of has that side scrolling flight kind of. You could be two players with a weird ghost Superman. Mm. Weird. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, Alexander Salkind was like, my son, he played Pac Man. Pac Man. Superman should fight Pac Man. Super Pac Man. I'm sure That's they're. Movie. I'm sure they're like, Atari, we need help paying <laughs> for <Richard> Superman 3. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Richard Pryor. Please <clears throat> let us. Coke, K- K- Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> That's yeah. what I love about Superman movies. It's always like what people get punched into is Marlboro trucks and shit. Yeah. So the, mm-hmm. the, the, the computer has a bunch of these. Defense, Defense system. Yeah, system. which is uh, reminiscent of a scene that was originally, I guess, cut out of the original Superman, where as Superman's coming after Lex Luthor in his fortress, they've got, like, they burn him, they shoot him with a bunch of machine guns and all this other stuff, He's got it, and they freeze him, right? He goes to a gauntlet. Yeah, that, that wouldn't make sense for movie, anybody but, but Superman. Like, if cops were coming down there, like, you would freeze cops to death? Yeah, but you'd burn them alive? <laughs> but this is what happened, right? They Because it was cut out of that first movie, they said, God damn, we're going to put it in Superman 3. So they shoot missiles at Superman. And then when he finally gets there, the computer, like, knows your weakness, which is like, what? Yeah. Why? Everybody it's else's the internet. weakness is a fucking gun, but Superman has needs kryptonite rays. Yeah. So. And so that goes after him. And then it figures out that... There's a cool uh, invisible bubble that, like... Oh, yeah. What is that made out of? Yeah, yeah. I always thought that was a little freaky. (laughs) It always looked a little weird, because it looks like there's weird white veins or some shit. Exactly. It looks weird. It always freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. But I do think... Isn't that the same thing he whipped off his chest in Superman 2? No, we're not talking about that, goddammit. We're never, ever... I'll choke you with my... Nobody's ever talking about that. We're actually censoring this part of the podcast. We don't talk about the... Travis blocks that part out. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> the, how? Because that's another movie. We <laughs> have Superman to, two. Donner came out and corrected that. <laughs> yeah, he cut that out. Uh, okay. But I do like how, because regardless of, I don't know how, I still think they made it look like a challenge for Superman. 
you know, he's on the ground. I mean, it still looks like this computer could fuck Superman up. That's yeah. why Gus Grant needs to like, no, Superman. This is why I kind of like this character. The idea that, yeah, sure, he wants money. He wants to help this bad guy by, you know, doing his computer stuff. But yeah. he doesn't like necessarily want to kill people, let alone Superman. He likes right. Superman. Yeah. I like how, like, even though he's a bad guy, he still almost has, I assume, is the Richard Pryor that Pierre, uh, I just forgot his Salinger. Like that. Yeah. Isn't it Pierre Salinger? Whatever no. the fuck it was. Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> of course he loves me. Yeah, the goddamn it. Yeah, he flew my job. Yeah, job. Yeah. Pierre Springer. But I'm just saying that he's <laughs> able he to have think. the same, you know. I kind of like when a bad guy isn't 100% bad. Like, yeah, yeah he wants like he's, money. He's not doing anything that directly physically harms people. As far as he knows. Even though, yeah, like, like, even though like, if you ruin the crap of well, yeah, it's, it's gonna, uh, Columbia, everybody would start there. Happen, exactly. He's not seeing it. He's just he's like, <laughs> yeah. that's not Superman. I love Superman. Yeah. Fuck Columbia. Yeah. He did deliver super, Superman a the kryptonite, which he thought was going to kill him. It didn't, but that was the intention of giving him the fake kryptonite. Yeah, he thought he was going to kill him, but he felt bad about it, I guess. I don't think he really felt. I don't think he really thought it was going to work, though. Well, that's why I'm talking about this villain as, like, kind of what I considered it. For 83 to be a pretty cool villain is the idea that he's able to get people to do things through money. And, you know, he is this 80s capitalist. Like, he's the Wall Street guy, right? When did Wall yeah. Street come out? 87. You yeah. know, it's like, this is that guy, right? This is yeah. this is Gecko, whatever his name is. In a Gordon Superman, Gecko. Gordon Gecko in a Superman, Superman movie. Yeah. And... And I think, in a weird way, no, that wasn't. It that was. was <laughs> it all, was. That guy was a. Oh, dude, he had that awesome he line was, where that was where he's like, he "Gus, if there's anything I hate more than anything, it's greed." <laughs> That's a great <laughs> line. Uh, so he's the opposite of Gecko. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he just wants to put money down and he expects people to do things for him. I really like this villain. It, like, it captures my imagination. Here's the number. I don't know if I missed this or if it just was pointless. Whenever they showed his little blonde bimbo and she was by herself, Mm -hmm. she was obviously really smart. She was reading intelligent books. She had intelligent comments. The baby voice was gone. Why didn't that ever play out? Like, what was the point of that? The point is she is smart enough to pretend to be a bimbo so she could live that lifestyle. That that. was it? Yeah. There wasn't. Okay. I I didn't know. know That's a small joke, right? It's a small joke that you would assume. This is a bimbo, but no, she's something. actually <laughs> smart. You know, that, that book she's reading is a famous philosopher yeah, or yeah. whatever the hell. Yeah. I, I really like, I, I don't like, like her baby gonna... voice, oh but God. I do like her, yeah. I do like her like random kind of mm-hmm. like, I like when the machine's breaking down, she's like, it must have figured out how to do this and this or whatever. Like, well, I'm out of here. And and I like then, how she, but I like the idea. And that, then she immediately turns it back on. She's like, baby, I'm here. here. And she just like goes into baby voice. Yeah. But I do like how she's concerned about Superman, just like Miss yeah. Tessbacher in the first I didn't know if there was like more to that or if it was just like a it little. Was just a few, yeah, like okay. a gag to do no a few plot times. Point, Same thing little, as like okay. the, 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 the. the Guy's baby sister looks like a man. You know, they just keep on throwing that joke out there because it's. I have a question. All right, so you said you were young when you saw this movie. You were young when you saw this movie. I was a kid. Yeah, I had. Right. I seen this movie my whole life. That's how young I was. Okay, so <laughs> my wife saw this movie when she was young, and she was traumatized by a moment in this sequence we're Dude. talking about, where the sister, the yes. evil sister. Gets yeah. grabbed by the supercomputer and is turned into a, a fucking, robot. That that's, was traumatizing. That's Did it? scary. Was it? I don't As a kid. That's a little that's scary. 13. It was so unexpected for and the rest of this movie. All of a sudden, you're like, whoa, dude, what is this? Dude, that's an actual scary monster. This yeah. whole movie is Richard Pryor, like, pretending to be a, a Texas dude, you know? I'm like, I mean, I'm sitting there watching and it, pretending and I'm like, to be Patton. villain. Like, that should have yeah. been the movie. It's the should have been, like, yeah. made physical. And, yeah, made yeah, physical. And and physical. That's, that's your movie right there. It was there. very that underwhelming been. this time around as an adult. Oh, I still think it's sad because it's like, everybody shits on the character the whole movie, and then she's trying to escape, and the thing turns. I like it's just like oh man this this poor creature she's like uh I feel so bad for her it's strange because you turn that into something else when you're younger oh yeah and then when you so. see it now it's like Jesus that's fucking yeah, yeah. awful but it's it goes but then you so turn it into too. this thing when, when you're, you're a little a kid, kid. But when I you're a kid it's like it's so, larger it's like, than oh, yeah. holy shit that girl just got turned into a computer yeah. but I think it's still it's think it's like kind of yeah. scary look I still think the makeup's good if you that's look at the awful. arm <laughs> dude if you look at the Carol, arm look at the design on her arm dude it's a good design I shit you not it's a good design I like the concept I do like the concept well Superman of course I mean I suppose saves the day and gives 
Richard Pryor or fucking hey brother man. <laughs> like, oh my he god! He gives him the handshake. <laughs> it doesn't even say a word to him, which is kind of weird. It's just like, and I did like the like from where you're standing, you look like one of the bad guys, you know, because Richard Pryor's kind of like, hey, I'm not with these guys. It's like, looks like you don't mind helping. With all. And I kind of like that suit man. He's like, hey, fuck you, dude. Yeah. You're up there. You're up. But then as soon as, like, well, he does help him. Uh, yeah. Defeat He's the like, Christ- this guy is just Multiple like. felonies. Yeah. I'll fight you your new job. Fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> That's because, you know. Because he's Superman. Superman. He's good in people. Even yeah. Superman has white privilege. I blew that oil back <laughs> in the tanker. Fuck <laughs> <Talk Yeah>. it. <laughs> It had to be said. Superman's like, hey, this guy broke all these laws, made a weather satellite, almost take out a thing, uh, made all these oil tankers, which, fuck, we didn't even talk about, collect into the center of the thing to control oil and create a gas panic. And Superman's like, he needs a good job. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's his only issue. It's like, that's the only reason he's a criminal. He needs a good job. Gus is like, eh, nah, uh, like, even though it's like, well, you needed the job. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's what I'm but saying. But that's funny. Like, we are coming up on the on the hour mark, so we have anything left to say about Superman three Igor. before what well, before Igor? Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anybody? All right, so <laughs> Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Hey, Igor, I uh, I actually brought some old Superman comics if you want to, like, you know, read them or whatever. Well, no, you've you got can the take, I guess. Igor slime all over them. That's just not Jesus, I, I wouldn't He's looking terrible. Slime. I think it was Sean's week to take him to the groomers. On the upside, it is kind of kryptonite-colored green slime. So this is the Igor's mailbag segment, if you haven't already determined. You can write to us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also get a hold of us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show is our handle, or you can write to us at Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Ben Harris writes into us and says, Hey guys, greetings from the UK. Just wanted to say, love the podcast, keeps me entertained whilst doing the night shift at work. If you guys ever need any movie suggestions, let me know as I collect 80s and 90s horror movies. Keep up the good work. Yeah, you should awesome. always send in. Yeah. Uh, Always taking suggestions. Especially if it's something we've never seen before. You know, I'm really interested in. Yeah. Especially from the UK. What was the, what did we always talk about? Like, that is the UK psycho. It's uh, Peeping Tom. Yeah, Peeping Tom. Yeah. Let us know if you see Peeping Tom. Is that, (laughs) is that your psycho? I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Give us suggestions right in. We want to hear it. (laughs) Yeah. I love And I think we should always probably, you're listening to us the best way that you possibly can on the night shift. All right. So. (laughs) When About you're tired, not paying attention. <laughs> Superman 3. Crypticus writes in and says, I'm sure I'm not the only one who as a kid was just fucking terrified by the, that was all caps, by the zombie <laughs> robot monster lady from the climax of Soups 3. She was like the high tech ver- version of that scary slime possessed bitch from Prince of Darkness, which also made me soil my union suit. With the childhood trauma I received from those two scary ladies, plus those in The Exorcist, The Evil Dead, The Witches, and The Worst, Meg Muckle Bones from Legend. Ooh. I'm surprised Indeed I'm not terrified of women oh, in her. general. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. There you go. Uh, for Ghoulies 2, Dom Cree says he just saw this on Twitter, and no doubt there has to be some Ghoulies costumes for you guys. Holy fucking shit, dude. Uh, turns out that Full Moon Studios is happy to announce that they just signed a deal to release masks and costumes for the films of Full Moon Features in 2017. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. So I guess maybe we'll be able to get a ghoulie. Uh, they have a ghoulie toilet figure oh. <laughs> coming out of the toilet. And uh, Dom also says, please also tell Travis not to inflict munchies upon us. Not even I could find <laughs> anything redeeming in that pile of trash. That is an excellent suggestion. I only saw it once when I was probably 10 or 11, dude. I can't even imagine. I love the cover. That's all I'm going to say, dude. The munchie yeah. looking up the skirt yeah, with the yeah. cigarette woman or some in red. shit. It's a woman in red poster. Oh, excellent suggestion. Thank you for that comment. And finally, Bobette Georgie writes Bobette. in about the, because uh, I posted the Scream Until You Like It wasp video yes. on our Facebook page. She says, I don't remember this at all. Was it even played on Headbangers Ball? Well, you're a poet and didn't know it, but I can guarantee you that, yes, Scream Until You Like It did play on Headbangers Ball. For all you kids out there, it was MTV. Had a show where they played hard rock videos. Ricky Rackman was the host. And it was awesome. And that's where I first saw the video. I, kids, I hadn't seen Ghoulies, too. I saw Scream Until You Like It first. 
back in the day. Crazy. What is that? Do you hear that sound? Uh-oh. What sound? That's Uh-oh. the tolling of the bell. Oh, good God. You oh know what that God, could mean, too. Please. Wrap no. ups oh, no. are coming. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Oh Thanks, my Lurk. God. Don't, don't. Was, was, don't Dave, make eye was, contact. was Lurk, like, when he, ant- he didn't scare you when he, ant- when, when you came to the door earlier, he's a did little, he? He's a little abrasive when you first he's, meet him. He doesn't mean to be so, he just doesn't have a soul. He does. <laughs> I have a little bit of tinkle in my pants. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have that. It's normal. Lurk. It's totally normal. I, so. I didn't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, so Lurk brings us to the wrap up segment of the show where we're going to go around the bar one final time and let you know like how we felt about the movie. So Superman first up, 3. we've got Colin. Holy shit. I'm in that seat again. Uh, so Superman three. Yeah. Um, I do like the fact that this movie kind of, uh, in 1983, we're dealing with concepts such as the internet <laughs> and artificial intelligence. New things. Like, Long before this was a thing. I mean, you know, the idea that, you know, Gus can go into a, a computer terminal in a, whatever it was, an insurance Wheat store King. or something in uh, Smallville and affect a weather satellite. I also like the fact that, like, if you reprogram a weather, weather satellite, you can actually change the weather. You might Fantastic. be able to. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think, personally, the first Superman movie is a goddamn classic. It's, Mm -hmm. to me, one of the best movies that's ever been made. There's something to the character of Superman in in the Donner movies, right? That is, like, you know, so true blue and, you know, the world's ultimate Boy Scout. But I think there's something about the... Maybe just the whole thing of superheroes or Superman in general. It's like there's like this really fine line that you have to run it on. And Donner figured that shit out. And his movie is fantastic. Lester, unfortunately, in his hands, Superman mm-hmm. 3 is what you're afraid of that is going to happen to Superman in a movie where it's like, man, this stuff really is silly as all hell. I mean, because it's a comedy, because they can't figure out how to treat it seriously. So they're just like, we're going to make it funny because it's inherently just goofy. You got a guy in tights, he turns into blah, 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 and the kids will love it. And it's like, it really is, I mean, like a a dramatic, I think, step down, maybe even from Superman 2. I got to go back and watch Superman 2 again, but uh, as far as quality. So now you look at it as almost like, you know, it is like, a you know, it's a bad movie. Is it funny it's not uh, the fucking train wreck that i remember uh superman 4 i think that's like yeah that's awful <laughs> that's so this is it is better than that um superman 4 another clark kent different clark kent <laughs> but the i guess the uh where was i going the, not the, the so much the tone of the character but i mean the movie like once you actually take like the reverence for the character out of it and now you got superman appearing at like birthday parties and all that stuff Richard Pryor is the uh, the main, you know, star of the movie. I mean, it just kind of feels like you've cheapened it. The bad guy is, like, really kind of, I didn't think he was terribly well-defined. It was just like, I'm the Bond supervillain, and, you know, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing. So uh, it's a bad movie, but it's not necessarily, like, really funny. Like, the comedy that I thought that was in the movie misfired all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's just age, because I think, you know, some of that stuff... You had to be there when it actually came out in order to for to experience it, and now it's like as time has gone on, you're like that's eh, not really funny. That that the the brand of comedy, I guess, from that era has passed us, and it it didn't play. But at the same time, we were making fun of it for like its goofy special effects or its goofy like how it was treating computers or the the anachronisms of the movie, you know, being from the '80s or whatever. So. Uh, in that respect, I don't know. Would I recommend Superman three? I don't think so because I like the first one so much. I think I'd say watch Superman, the movie definitely, and probably see Superman two, but you can probably, to me, I think you can skip Superman three and four. That was a double whammy on mine, but (laughs) there you go. Yeah. I'd have to agree with you there. Um, basically, I just, I think this movie, 
I think this movie disappoints what people want from Superman. I really think uh, the first one and even the second one, it delivers this this phenomenon that is Superman. The second one, or, I mean, the second one's not the greatest. The first one is amazing. We can all agree that's one of the best movies. It's amazing. But this this third one, it, it cheapens Superman for me. It really does. I, I know they're they're trying a different a different approach with the comedy, but it just doesn't play out. And I, I don't know. It's it's just too silly. It, from the start of it, you're like, what am I watching? Like, what is this intro? It just brings down the tone from the very beginning, and it never comes back up, in my opinion. Um, I, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. Like, Richard Pryor was funny, right? Like, at some point... Richard Pryor was funny at some he point. Was at some funny. point, he was funny. In this I thought he was funny in this movie. He did his drunk routine. <laughs> if you ever see a stand-up, he does a th- drunk routine. <laughs> well, yeah, no, stand-up is different, but I thought that it just it cheapened Superman. I, I really think it did. I, I did enjoy drunk Superman. I like the whole psychological battle between Clark and Superman. I thought that was really good. I, I think that that could have played out a little better than what it did. Um, and I did like the... I, I like the concept of the computer woman at the end. I think that, that could have been built into a bigger villain than it was. I think that was something really interesting. I will say this, though. It, at the very end, when you hear that John Williams score, you almost forget that you didn't like what you just watched. Because <laughs> you're just like, yeah, that's fucking Superman. Like, <laughs> it just made me happy. I, th- I, I don't know. It's but, the buildup. I know it is. I I love that score. You can't beat that score. But overall, I, I would say you have to pass on Superman three. I'm just a guest, and this movie was awful. <laughs> and I'd rather be playing catchphrase right now when I try dangling in front of everybody. Well, thank God we invited. So you I'd as a like guest. to wrap up, you know, my little uh, end of the night podcast by saying, yeah, it was funny at parts with Richard Pryor, but. It was an awful, awful movie. So I will wrap up my givings and say thank you for letting me be a guest again. And off to you, Charlie. Yeah, I like this movie because Superman is a kid. You watch Superman 1 and 2. Besides a bumbling Clark and just a guy that, like, says nice stuff. It's like you never really get deep into who Superman is, right? And I'm not saying this movie necessarily does that, but I'm saying this movie, it gives you a Clark Kent, and that's why I like this movie. This movie, to me, humanized Superman. For me, as a child, watching this. True. This was, it was a break. Like, the same way if you watch the old George Reeves show, you're with Clark Kent, this reporter guy, who's going after stories, and they just need to turn into Superman to help the story, right? But Clark Kent still has a fucking goal on his own. Not Superman, that Clark Kent has a goal. And that's why I do like Superman 3 for fucking what it is. I mean, I don't kid myself. Like, I, I laugh at the shit, you know, because, I mean, it's just fucking hysterical, you know. But there was a long time where, you know, when I watched all my superhero movies, all my horror movies that I that I grew up a little bit and I rewatched them and I cut all the list by like 70 to 80% of what I watched. Somehow, like, I fucking like this movie. Almost better than Superman 2, because Superman 2, 2, to me, is a little boring. Where this, to me, this is trying to be the Guardians of the Galaxy of its day. It's trying to say we can have a comic book, and we can put all this really goofy, fucking funny, quirky shit in it. This doesn't work, because this is, to me, a European sense of humor in an American sort of... Entity or whatever you want to call it. I think that's, that's what's what going on. That's what it felt on. like, but yeah. we established it was directed by an American director. But this guy's, they're cozy with the international comedy scene. Richard Lester directed for before. This is the movies they make, right? Yeah. So, and I think that's why the comedy, uh, I think some comedy really works really well, and a lot of it is dialogue comedy with little quips where... Well, you just might have to have a few. You got I don't know. I'm not saying it's deep. You got to think about it. But, but some of it, when you look at the writing, you're like, ah, fuck, that's funny. You know, like I never got until this viewing. I never got where 
where he's like, well, uh, Richard Pryor is talking to the ugly girl uh, sister of the rich guy, and he's like, well, Superman dried the land all up like one of those heat dryers in a men's room. You know what I'm talking about? And she, like, quirks her eyebrow because everybody's calling her a man the whole movie. I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's a little hidden joke that you could watch this 50 times and because you're... You could be bored with the movie. You could be just whatever. But that's a joke that might hit you like some night. You or you're like, ah, fuck. You know what he's saying? You know she, she's been in a men's room before. She's a man. You know she's. Yeah, you know, that's funny. That's and I do and, <laughs> and I do like this villain because even when they made Superman the movie. Uh, like Lex Luthor was the mad scientist. Ha ha, he's a mad scientist. Where, okay, so this is 83, and you and they had this idea of like, well, let's do this corporate, you know, everything in the 80s was about evil corporate, you know, OCP for Robocop, fucking. <laughs> well, in 86, they turned Lex Luthor into... Lex Core. It's like so it's like in a weird way. I don't necessarily think holy fuck, this is the pre like uh, whatever you want to call it uh of the 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 Lex Luthor we know today in comics and in Superman legend. Superman or Lex Luthor is the owner of Lex Core and the new Man of Steel Batman you know, Lex Core Industries. It's like fuck in a weird way, this movie to me beat like DC or could have given DC the idea of like, yeah, let's make Lex Luthor since it's the eighties and, and, and big business is our, you know, well, I mean, all movies and comics are written by like liberal minded people. So there's like all big business is the bad guys. Let's have Lex Luthor be the owner of a big business. That way he's getting away with things uh, legally. So Superman can't touch him the way he could just beat up a scientist or smash through a door and be like, yeah, all right, Luthor, I'm taking you to prison because he's covering his tracks with all his little little legal hoop loopholes. So I'm not saying this movie's like this is what created the Lux Luther of the modern age, but and I'm saying it predates it with kind of basically some of the same ideas of the Lex Luther of the modern age. And I just think that's fun and interesting. And I think that's a, another weird challenge for Superman. And another, like, I, I just think it's a, uh, yeah, what you were saying about the, how his, like, corporate dealings is almost the same as the, uh, the Lex Luthor land scheme, but not in a, but in a weird way, I think it's a little, not better, but it's not so mad scientist schemey. I'm gonna launch rockets and hit the thing. And the, the this is more like no, we're doing things the way people really do uh, industrial espionage. We're using computers to hack into. This is the, the shit they've always said. World War Three will be done on the computer. You know, World War Three is supposed to be guns, nukes. It's it's gonna be. Just think about it, people. <laughs> Superman three. <laughs> you put a guy in a in a in a spandex costume and say he's from another planet. You fucking got my imagination. You got my money. Especially Christopher Reeve. You know the guy that really like fucking embodied Superman for a generation. And like, I mean, come on. Like he doesn't know these movies suck cock. But Same thing God. with like Hugh Jackman and all these Wolverine movies. He knows they're horrible. But the guy knows the care. People right. love yeah. the character. So damn it, he's going to fucking do it with a smile and serious. Like, to me, this whole movie is a different movie than when Christopher Reeves is saying something as Superman. Like, to me, those stand out. You know, I'm like, holy fuck, that, yeah, that's so super, you know, that's a serious Superman that, to me, that's Christopher Reeve. That's not Richard Lester. That's not the Newmans. That's the, that's Christopher Reeve saying, this is how fucking Superman, when, when he lifts up Jimmy and Jimmy, like, ow, he goes, all right, sorry, sorry, you know, he has all, like, an authoritative, like, almost like a fireman, uh, cop-like, thing to his voice. It's like, God damn it, that's Christopher Reeve. That's none of these other filmmakers. It's not even Donner. Not even whatever. That's Christopher fucking Reeve. Bringing real life to this goddamn character. I love Superman 3. Oh, fucking <laughs> shit, do you love Superman 3? <laughs> Jason fucking Christ, do you love Superman 3? I'm not saying it's perfect. God I'm just saying. damn, do you love that movie? <laughs> 
Fuck, I might even show Superman quest for peace. Oh, don't do... No, no, no please okay. Don't. I might. Okay. Because you guys made fun of Man of Steel, and now I want you to know, no, Man of Steel is looking pretty goddamn good right about hey, now. Colin, wrap hey, this motherfucker hey, up, please. <laughs> I just did. Who's pick is well, the next First week? of all, if you, if you don't damn. want Superman for the quest for peace to appear on this show, please write do. in and, and, and tell us. Of course but, they do. <laughs> quest for a smoke. Jesus so, Christ. Next week, Sean is going to be picking the movie. He's not here tonight. He couldn't make it because of another important engagement. engagement. And uh, so we're going to be watching Ghostbusters 2. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>